If you were tasked with creating the most heavily armored dinosaur, you probably wouldn't even get close to the Ankylosaurus. With a skull wider than it was long, a beak-like mouth, pyramid-shaped crests above the eye sockets, upper and lower horns on the head, and a neck, back, and sides all covered in armored plates, the Ankylosaurus was the very definition of armored. But there was more. Its tail, covered in protective plates along its length, it then ended in one formidable club, one which was large enough and powerful enough to snap the hind legs of a T-Rex. Ankylosaurus was one of the last non-avian dinosaurs to walk the Earth, surviving right up until the end of the Cretaceous. It became extinct along with all the other non-avian dinosaurs, but its fossilized remains have provided an insight into their incredible lives. With its remarkable armor design, formidable tail club, and herbivorous existence, we ask the question, could Ankylosaurus survive nowadays? These dinosaurs stood taller than a man and measured 8 meters, or 26 feet long. They were herbivores, browsing and grazing a wide range of vegetation from leaves to pulpy fruit, which its cusp-like teeth and broad beak were adapted for. They would have fed on about 60 kilograms, or 130 pounds of ferns per day, the same as a large African elephant. They may have also eaten small invertebrates to supplement their diet, making them partially omnivorous rather than fully vegetarian. Did you know that only 5.7% of our viewers are subscribed to Fax Machine? If you enjoy our content and want to help us grow, hit that subscribe button. Let's aim to get that number up to at least 15%. Thank you. Ankylosaurus lived 66 million years ago, mostly in Western North America, although remnants of other members of the Ankylosaur group have been found in all other continents except for Africa. They roamed the shores of the Western Interior Seaway, a body of water that divided North America in two. The climate in which Ankylosaurus was used to was a warm subtropical temperate one, with monsoons, tropical storms, and forest fires. Today, they would survive in parts of the world with a similar subtropical climate. This would include countries that exist across a band north of the equator, from the southern states to North Africa, parts of the Mediterranean, the Middle East, Bangladesh, and parts of eastern China. Subtropical climates are also found south of the equator in Argentina, Chile, South Africa, and Australia. The subtropical regions of the United States, such as the American Gulf and Lower East Coast, wouldn't be too far from where Ankylosaurus roamed all those years ago. They would need to have plenty of vegetation to keep their enormous body masses going. Many of these subtropical regions are home to the majority of the world's cycads. These plants are living fossils, and they were so common during the Jurassic period that it is sometimes referred to as the Age of Cycads. Ankylosaurus wasn't a picky eater back then. It was capable of consuming a range of vegetation that was lying low to the ground. Nowadays, not only cycads would be available in the subtropics, but also some ferns and conifers that the lumbering dinosaurs would be able to eat. Whilst 66 million years ago Ankylosaurus would have fought off the likes of Tyrannosaurus rex, nowadays, they would have smaller predators to contend with. They could only amble at a speed of 6 miles per hour, so they wouldn't be able to outrun even the slowest of predators. But their armor would likely protect them from anything that today's world could throw at them. Living in parts of North America, South Africa, Asia, and Australia today, they would need to look out for alligators, lions, crocodiles, and tigers. One swipe with their tail in any of these relatively small predators would be killed. It is unlikely these predatory animals would be able to get a bite into the Ankylosaurus. Back during the Cretaceous, it wasn't just their armor that made them difficult to attack and eat, but also the shape of their body. They were rotund and relatively flat, which made securing them in a pair of powerful jaws incredibly difficult. Estimates for T. rex's bite force vary widely, but an average could be assumed at 8,000 psi. In comparison, African lions have a bite force of around 1,000 psi. Would these big cats even be able to pierce the tough skin of an Ankylosaurus? Although the power generated by swinging the Ankylosaurus' tail would be great enough to snap these predators in half, scientists don't believe defense was their only purpose. It is thought that the tail was also used for intraspecific combat. Males fighting other males, for example much like animals with horns, like sheep, goats, and buffalo do today. Some even suggest that the tail could act as a form of mimicry. 
Its club-like end could be mistaken for the head of the animal, therefore fooling any potential threat and luring them to the back end before delivering a fatal blow. But owing to their large size and heavily armored body, they would likely be left alone by most modern-day predators, in the same way that elephants are largely safe from predators, unless traveling alone or with a young calf. Ankylosaurus would probably be too big for a lion or crocodile to take down. With no natural enemies, Ankylosaurus could potentially thrive in the modern world as long as it found enough food to eat and lived in a warm enough climate. Being so large, although the quantity of food has been compared to modern-day elephants, the Ankylosaurus may benefit from evolving into smaller forms. Pressures, or lack of, from other species can cause some animals to adapt and evolve over time. This has happened many times over the Earth's history, typically with many mammals becoming smaller. Good examples include the megafauna of the Pleistocene. The large mammals that survived into the modern Holocene mostly became smaller. There was less threat from other large animals, so being big in size was less of an advantage. They were able to conceal themselves better, and with the increasingly fragmented habitats, smaller animals required less space. Other benefits for Ankylosaurus if it evolved into a smaller animal would include the need for less energy. They would require less food to sustain them. Something important in today's unpredictable world where humans and human activity can destroy habitats for wildlife. However, they would be more likely to lose body heat if they were smaller. As they were used to much warmer temperatures during the Cretaceous, they may struggle in the cooler climate of today. There may be a trade-off between maintaining body heat and keeping body size small enough to require less energy, but smaller animals are more likely to find a broader range of habitats in which to live and generally require smaller territories. Introducing a large animal like Ankylosaurus into our world, although it wouldn't necessarily pose a direct threat to other species in the same way a top prehistoric predator like T. rex would, there would still be an impact on the ecology. Other herbivores in the regions where Ankylosaurus could live would compete with the dinosaurs for food. During the Cretaceous period, Ankylosaurus shared its habitat with herbivorous dinosaurs like Triceratops, Taurosaurus, Edmontosaurus, and Pachycephalosaurus. Fights may have broken out, but they largely existed harmoniously together due to specialized feeding strategies and feeding on different vegetation from one another. In today's subtropical countries, Ankylosaurus would also have to live alongside other herbivores. These would include small animals like bison, buffalo, guanacos, African and Asian elephants, guar, kangaroos, deer, and antelope. With no top predators to keep them in check, Ankylosaurus could end up causing too much destruction to the cycad forest in which they would live. There are areas in Africa where elephants are culled because they damage the vegetation too much. They strip the bark from trees or knock them over to get the juiciest leaves. Although they are considered a keystone species, one which is vital for an ecosystem, they can wreak havoc on an area if their numbers aren't controlled. The same could be said for Ankylosaurus. Although there is no evidence that they ate bark and scientists believed they were too low to the ground to knock over trees, their big appetites could cause significant damage to the surrounding vegetation. This could have a knock-on effect for the other species that rely on plants, not just for food, but for shelter too. Some species of Ankylosaurus lived solitary lives, which would mean that their impact on the vegetation would be minimal. However, some species were thought to have lived in herds which could trample ecosystems and demolish grasslands. Whether having an Ankylosaurus roaming around on Earth once more is a good thing or a bad thing, and whether it could survive or not is up for debate. But what do you think? Do you think Ankylosaurus could survive nowadays? That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.